Hi guys. Hi guys, um, can you give me a thumbs up and um, let me know that you can hear me, please? <clears throat> Was a thumbs up? Or any emoji or in the comment or whatever. I hope you're keeping safe. I am Tracy, thank you, and I hope you are too. Yeah, um, right, so for those for those who are watching, hello, hello, you're right. Um, brilliant morning. Yeah, it was a brilliant morning. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm a bit overwhelmed by how much people brought, but yeah. Um, hi, Becky. Right, so um, I'm going to just introduce myself for anybody that's new in the group. I'm Becky Alexander-Frost, um, and I design patterns and fabric and yeah so you're in the group to learn a bit about sewing and me doing some sew alongs and um, yeah so <laughs> right so just disclaimer that first of all when i address someone called michael it's him there he's going to be operating my two camera system for me and um when i oh thanks lo yeah i wonder who made it <laughs> um yeah <laughs> Um, and then also my eyes will keep reverting down here where all the questions will be popping up um, so sorry if my eyes will go down there and also if you're watching on YouTube at a later date this is live on Facebook um, from the 25th of October and um, basically um, it's basically a third party so people are asking me questions and I'm answering them so if you're watching on YouTube after this date you can basically um, ask me any questions in the comments below on YouTube. Give me the thumbs up and stuff like that. Yeah, the Ginger Ninja's here. He will come on and say hi later on. Right, so without f waiting, I'm just going to wait a little bit longer because we started uh, one or two minutes earlier. Hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, is everybody fed and watered? Woohoo! Good job. <laughs> <laughs> right so I can see people are checking out um, on the website I keep swiping across it um, people are buying the download well not buying getting the free download hi Dawn yeah what a day it was a really good morning thank you <laughs> I couldn't keep up with um, the amount of people messaging me through the day through the morning so Thank you, Susan. I know it's Susan, but it's Terry's account, so I know it's Susan. Right, so I'm gonna jump straight into it. So, first of all, <laughs> I'm looking at my husband here. Um, I'm gonna go over to the overhead camera, if that's possible, Michael, please. Thank you. Right, so um, today we are working on the um, the classy clutch bag, uh, one of the classy clutch bags. We're going to make the very easiest one possible first. So the um, classy clutch clutch bag is so easy to make. Christine's just said hi, Michael. <laughs> He's waving. <laughs> um, so basically, um, the classic clutch bag is um, is a series of bags which I'm going to bring out one by one to teach you all different techniques. Plus, that's okay, Lo. Thanks for my earrings and my necklace. Have a lovely day. Um, no, Teresa, we haven't spoken for a long time. So, right. So um, you can download the free pattern. So you can download it and print it off yourself and all you have to do is go to www.rjafmakes.com and basically go to downloadable patterns within the shop and you'll see this one and basically add it to your cart and check out but you don't have to type in any of your um, account details or I don't think 
I'm not 100%, but don't quote me on this. You don't have to type in your address either. It's totally up to you. I do advise you to sign up to the newsletter, and I'm not saying this as a plug, but every so often I do throw in a discount code for you guys to shop. So sign up to the discount, um, uh, sign up to the, um, the, what's it called? The, uh, what's it called, Michael? The newsletter, that's the one. <laughs> uh, sign up to the newsletter, and basically every so often there will be um, up to date um, discounts that go out to people, and yeah. If you can't print off, don't worry, there is a printable, um, printed one with the paper pattern pieces that are needed and it's a nice glossy booklet like all my patterns are. So don't worry, that is available. Um, all you have to do is go over to the shop section within the website and click on the paper patterns. Now, earlier on in the week when this pattern went live um, in the group, there is actually a discount code and I'm not 100% if it's working. Um, let me know if you're buying this. Hi Linda. Um, if you're buying this and um, as a, a paper pattern version and the code doesn't work, don't check out. Message me and I will get it sorted for you. We're not 100% if the discount code is actually working. Right, so in the pattern, I'm going to pop the, um, the booklet one to one side. In the pattern there is four different designs but over the course of the next two months I'm going to be doing each one but each one's going to have a slightly different version as well so for instance there will be an extra blog post that goes with it which will be like an altered version of that specific one so it means that you can actually you did work for me yesterday it, it yeah it, I think it's hit and miss I think it keeps crashing um, the, my website keeps crashing for the amount of people that are hopping in and out of the website at one time it keeps crashing on certain people so yeah so just keep trying if it doesn't work message me and I will basically do a private invoice for you the um, so today we are going to work on this one and we're going to make it as it is however if we have a look at this one there is a blog post for this, so it's basically this pattern. Michael, let me go. It is this pattern, but it's actually got a different finish. So if Michael brings up the one slide for me, yeah. Right. So basically, if you go to rjfmakes.com um, and go to the blog section within the tutorial section at the top of the um, menu you can actually bring up this blog post so it tells you which which um, steps to go to in the pattern of this specific uh, of the Pacific one that we're working on today and basically um, work your way through the the instructions that I've put in the blog thanks Michael front view uh, overhead Thanks. Right, so that is on the blog post. Right, so it's so simple and we are starting off with the most easiest one first. So the first one is the first page. How good's that? <laughs> right, so I've kept it to the bare minimum of what hardware you need as it's a free pattern. You don't have to do what I've called the wristlet. You don't have to do this. Also, I was thinking like the other day, this doesn't have to be made classy. It could be made in baby fabric and you could change this, um, this flap part here. Oh, you're welcome, Sharon. Um, you can change this, um, this closure bit here and actually basically put a button um, closure, closure on it and have it as a new mom-to-be present. So you can put like nappies and baby wipes in here and she can just put, pop this into a handbag if she doesn't want to take it on a short trip. So there is possibilities of doing altered things for these. Um, but you don't have to do the, um, the wrist strap if you don't want to. I've made it a large one because they can be quite fiddly when, they're, when you're a new beginner in bag making and if they're so thin. 
and basically it's just nice and easy to hold. Right, so I'm just going to pop the bag to one side. The pattern is very basic. It's hardly got any pictures in, not my normal style patterns where they've got tons and touch of tons and touch tons and tons <laughs> of um of actual um pictures. However, the instructions are very clear and the whole point of these sew along videos is so you can actually sew along with me. Right, so I'm just going to jump into what you actually need. So you don't have to use PU fabric, you can use ordinary fabric for the, um, the outer. So first of all, I'm using Lisa Lamb from U, U Handbags um, PU fabric. So I'm using her shiny stuff, I'm hoping that picks up, yeah, her shiny stuff and um, her blue and it's the full grain. I advise if you're brand new to PU to get it from, and you're in the UK, to get it from Lisa Lamb. The only reason being me saying that is I'm not saying it as because she's one of my closest friends, but I'm saying it down to the fact that she only sells PU that is sewable for a beginner. So this is Marine Weight. Marine Weight has a special um, backing and it's so easy to use. I'm not sure what thread to use. Pam, I will get onto the thread in a minute for you. Um, so yeah, I've interfaced everything what's needed. So all the bits that are here, like the wristlet strap is not interfaced. The, the small D-ring tab on the side isn't interfaced. The wrap, around closure isn't interfaced the d-ring strap isn't interfaced either the flap from the pu is interfaced and it's also got fusible fleece now with fusible fleece if you've noticed i've interfaced it but i've cut away the fusible fleece before i fused it on so it basically has a clear a clear part of the um, where the seam seam allowance is see as low has gone Fred ha 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 yes thanks Lynn <laughs> um, so yeah so any panel that has fusible fleece on make sure you cut it back by three eighths of an inch all the way around just means that you're not going to have any problems when you're actually um, sewing it together. So the only pieces that have got a fusible fleece on are the flap, the flap main outer piece and the two body main outer pieces. And I'm using PU leather from Lisa Lamb on both of those parts. Then the only other two things that I've got interfacing on is the inside slip pocket and the 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 actual flap lining that's the only two pieces that I've got interfacing on as well as the other three pieces of um, the main body pieces and the outer flap the two lining pieces haven't got any interfacing on. I'm trying to keep the bulk away at the moment for all those new beginners. So, the next things you'll need is your paper pattern pieces. Your paper pattern pieces, you'll have um, a thick black border all, or, all the way around. You're cutting on the outside of the black border for both of those two pieces. Now there is only three templates in the actual pattern and sorry a noisy car just went past <laughs> noisy um so you'll only need these two oh sorry that's upside down these two pieces for this bag that we're making today the way I cut my PU out for instance is pretend this is a large piece of PU this I'll put my pattern piece on obviously it would be larger 
I would physically get on the wrong side of the PU, get a biro and draw around my template and then physically cut it out. If any any reason my pattern say place on the fold and it's PU, for instance, if this piece was just like that in the pattern, I will tell you to pop it down onto the PU, draw around this piece, then where I've drawn that line in the center, I would flip that over, match that up to where that drawn line is and then draw around that. That goes for any pattern that you've you you're using from any designer hi joe um from any designer regarding when you're tracing out on pu right so that being said hardware right so hardware you'll need a swirl trigger clasp and you'll need two one inch D rings. So these D rings are for this part here, the closure part. And then you'll need a small D ring, which is for this part here, this um, this where this hooks on and off. Uh, when she can get it. Oh, my hands are gone. My arthritis is playing up today, so just bear with me. So this here, is where the small d-ring goes however i am adding an optional to the pattern i'm adding some rivets now you don't if you don't know how to install these i will show you with a machine today of how i install them you don't these are not these are not needed this is these little things here they're not needed for me i don't use them as security i use them as for show i don't use them as on any of my bags they're not there to anchor something into place like some people and some designers use them for i don't do that i actually use it just for show just like on your jeans they have rivets on and i pers and i know full well they don't use rivets to reinforce areas they just use them for show right so i'm just going to pop those to one side okay and then i'm also going to use some of these labels um in my bag i like to just do that i'm i'm just a bit quirky when it comes to adding a label to the bag but these are from um Kylie and the machine in Australia but I brought, brought these from Lisa Lam herself when I fell in love with them and this one this one little label says to that so right so on your machine my advice is if you're using a home machine you'll need a walking foot on your machine um, especially if you're using PU you don't have to use a walking foot but if you can get a Teflon foot for your machine that would be ideal as well the walking foot will just help grab that fabric and pull it through at an even pace so the stitches are even for you as well. My also pet love is um, size 16 needles um, when I'm using bulky things through my machine. So for instance, because I've got fusible fleece and PU, I'll put a size 16 needle in my actual um, machine. Right, so, can we go to the front view, please, Michael? Right, so I'm hoping everybody's caught all that. If there's any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Any questions that I do miss, I will um, gladly answer after the live. So don't, and my theory is, and my club members know this, no question is small or stupid. So even if it means that you want to ask the most trivial question, just ask him. Even if it's asking what the weather's doing, just ask, no question small and no one will make a joke or I say kicked out. Or if it's a mild joke, they can stay in, but if they're nasty, they kick down. Right, so in my machine here, in my machine here, I'm hoping you can see that, yeah. 
the thread that I'm using because I'm using PU and because I'm bag making um, my husband's taking the mick out of me because I can't say thread is it have I said it right yes <laughs> yes mate <laughs> because I can't say thread right <laughs> and I say Fred as in the male and um, so yeah <laughs> my Fred is um I've said it again <laughs> Guterman Fred and I'm using so all Fred and um, I'm using Guterman so all Fred because it's a polyester and it's got a bit of a stretch which means that um when for instance if you're making the strap and you overfill the bag slightly. <laughs> yes, everyone, the emojis that are coming up. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a running joke for the last year, this has. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> um, so if you're making a shoulder strap or your bag is going to be pulled through a turning gap you need to use polyester thread reason being is you are pulling and pull, pulling that fabric polyester thread gives it that bit of a stretch which means it's not going to snap if you use cotton thread like like um what size rivets um i'm using a number nine rivet dawn and a number nine die um in my machine which i will show you guys in a bit so um so yeah so if you're wanting to use cotton thread my advice is to stay away from cotton thread while you're bag making um the reason being is there is nine times out of ten you're going to have a strap on it which means that it will stretch when you're actually um overfilling the bag and it also means that um it won't snap i i'll tell you a story back 10 years ago when I made my first very bag and I used um, cotton thread in all of all the whole bag the whole bag was fine it was the shoulder strap and the crossbody strap the lady that I made it for was a friend of the family and um, the cotton thread all snapped so I ended up having to re-sew the shoulder strap and the crossbody bag a crossbody strap again for so my advice is to use cotton thread for your quilting for your dressmaking but use um gutman's uh use a polyester thread it doesn't have to be gutman so all thread it can be moon thread if you wanted to moon coat thread um but as long as it's a polyester thread and it's got a stretch right that being done and we've got the blur out of the way shall we get on to making the bag so can we go to the overhead camera please Michael <clears throat> thank you right so let me get the pieces that we're going to work on first right, so we're going to do these bits first Right. Okay, so I'm gonna just revert to my my pattern every so often. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is work on the D ring tab, which is this bit here. So if I take this part, can I ask? place to buy purpose thread yeah um and go to rjfmakes.com um i'm not plugging my own shop but i actually do sell it in my own shop i sell it for a reason because most of the club members like to know where to get it from moon thread is all i use yeah joe uh, jo, joy sorry you can actually use moon thread i used to use moon thread all the time but i know my elna doesn't actually quite like moon thread right so I'm going to make this bit first so we're going to use the d-ring 
the flap D-ring strip. So you'll get used to me. And don't ask me if I've got quilters tape in stock. I haven't yet, but it's it is on its way. <clears throat> do you do the large sizes? I have got the large sizes coming in stock. Thanks. Um, I've got the large size ones coming in stock um, in the next two weeks because I've just ordered loads. Yeah, um, this, um, the Dragon Wing fabric is lush. Um, yeah, it is Dragon Wings. Um, yeah, it's, I got it from Tanya, it's Tanya Fabrics, I got this time last year. It's got bits of hints of gold in it and it's beautiful colours. But also from here in the camera, it looks like waves, like in the sea, but that's me. Right, so back to the tutorial, <laughs> right, okay. So got your D-ring strap, I'm working on the wrong side here and I'm just going to find the centre. So this was um, 2 inch wide so I'm just going to find the centre and I'm going to find it and that's 1 inch. I'm going to draw a line. Okay, so I've got my centre line. So the next thing you're going to get used to me for those who are new in the actual group I use quilter ta quilters tape double sided a, a lot in bag making it just saves you time and because we're using PU we're not meant to pin PU so I'm just going to run some quilters tape on the top and the bottom of the line Okay, so I'm going to peel off the backing of the first one and then I'm going to bring the raw edge of this to the centre line where I've marked and you're really going to have to push down on it to stick it into place. Then I'm going to peel off the the bottom I'll just twist that round I'm going to peel off the next backing tape and stick that into the center I do apologize um, if you can hear the traffic outside it's um, Sunday and the weather's quite nice so people are obviously having to drive around while I can because how many bags do you think you make a year Tony, um, before I came a pattern designer, um, before I came a pattern designer and fabric designer, I used to make at least 10 bags a week um, because I used to sell them worldwide. So yeah, um, I think I've made in the 10 years of bag making well over 500, well over 500. Right, so I'm going to get both of those D-rings and feed those on, like so. Now I'm going to rest the end one nearest the short side on the two inch mark. Um, Laurie, if you're using fabric, yes, if you're using PU, no, I would say you need quilters tape on. Now, because I have can't get it in yet, um, because there's been problems. I'm going to say, oh, I've done that in the wrong place. Right, I'm going to say use it. Um, I'm going to put a link to Amazon. Um, Amazon, I buy four of these, this size, um, for about ten pounds. Sounds a bit like waves. That's all right, Teresa. I'll, I'll take that one. Right, so I've popped a bit of PU on this end here. 
And what we're going to do is peel off that backing and fold. Make sure those D rings are on the two inch mark. And we're going to fold this over to the wrong side. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just run some quilters tape over the top. I'm going to leave around about an inch away from this folded edge and I'm just going to put that off. Right, so I'm just going to pop a clip there and just get the main outer flat piece. The website's going crazy. Thanks ever, ever so much for the people that are checking out um, the website. <laughs> My phone's just telling me loads of stuff's happening. Right, so like I say, on this um, outer, outer flat piece, I've got interfacing and I have got fusible fleece. And like I've done the fusible fleece, I've cut away the, um, the actual seam allowance area of fusible fleece. So what I'm going to do is find the middle, top and bottom. Just bear with me, I need a drink. I'm losing my voice a bit over the last few days. Thank you. Right, so I've snipped into my seam allowance, but I've not got more than one eighth of an inch of cutting. So what I tend to do is find a line on my um, vertically on my mat and just rest it on the where the two centre marks are, top and bottom. So the next thing we're going to do is pop this onto the actual flap. So you kind of know where your centre is of this this um, D ring because obviously it's where your two it's obviously where your two um, seams join. So we want to put pop this on the centre. We're going to stick it down. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is bring this D ring up. So let me just have a read. Okay, so we're gonna bring this D ring up. So that's the top one. So I'm going to get Michael to come to the front view camera and we're going to go and sew across this bit here. Can we go to the front view camera please, Michael? Thank you. Right, so I'm putting my machine on a stitch length number four. So some machines vary. I know my machine is a stitch length number four for top stitching. And um, I know some machines are 3.5. So what I tend to do is before I start a project is get some PU that I'm using in the actual project and I fold it about four or five times. Then I put that through, then I put that through the machine and top stitch and see how much it actually, how big the stitches look. I like to go for around about, without pointing it out, less than about, I like my stitches to be a length of just over one eighth of an inch apart. So, but with PU, because sometimes your machine gets it stuck under the presser foot, it, you can have your stitch length at a number 4.5 and it might do the most tiniest stitch. So just have a play around, work how your machine works, but my machine actually only likes doing it at a stitch length four. So I'm just gonna sew across that bit there. Now, 
my foot, my walking foot will actually go over my D-ring. But, uh, oh my chair is so squeaky. You might need one of these. Can we just go to the overhead camera please? Right, so, thanks. Um, this is called a bulky seam aid. A bulky seam aid helps your presser foot. So for instance, um, if I get my, so this is a presser foot. So sometimes if you're going over a bulky area, your presser foot can be going at an angle. Um, let me just bring that up. So it could be riding at an angle. Ah, there you go. Right, so it could be riding at an angle. That's when your stitches are going to jump. You need your presser foot to ride flat. So to make it ride flat, sometimes you have to put a bulky seam aid behind your presser foot. So I'm going to show you that in this camera. So the next time um, we come live, um, hopefully the third camera will be linked up so you can actually have a close up view of the actual sewing machine as well of what I'm doing. Can we go to the front view please? Right, so I'm just going to, I've got my needle down so I know where I'm going to sew and I'm just going to pop this underneath like so and just put my foot down and I'm just going to stitch really slowly and I'm going to reverse one or two stitches back and then I'm just going to finish off by reversing a few stitches back as well there you go all I've done is sewn across that little bit Go back to the overview, please. Thank you. Right, so we have sewn across where that is, where that bottom D ring is. Here, I'm going to bring down this D ring as far as it will go. And the next thing I'm going to do is stitch one eighth of an inch down this side to as far as my presser foot will let me pivot around so I'm stitching one eighth of an inch using a stitch a stitch length number four on my machine and I'm going to stitch down here across and then back up again but you can only go so far with your um, your foot so sometimes it might only be here I think my foot's an ultra wide um, walking foot so mine will probably get to about here but as long as you go over this bit here, um, this bit here, as long as you make it over by a quarter of an inch, you're fine to carry on. Right, so, right, front view please, Michael. Front view. Did your husband know he was going to be the cameraman in the future? Um, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, right, so I'm gonna tell you, all my club members have brought all this equipment for me, but I'm still a little way off to getting a switcher board where I don't need to have my husband operating my cameras over there for me because all the cameras are linked up to the computer so he basically clicks on the computer and basically when I say overhead camera he'll click onto the overhead camera for me. I need a switcher board and that's my next thing I'm buying in the new year. There's a switcher board which is like a program um, little switcher box which I can operate the cameras so it doesn't mean I have to wait for my husband to be to do the lives. I could do the lives whenever I I get time to do them. So it doesn't mean I have to wait for my husband because he works full time as well. So yeah, good question Teresa. Right, so I'm just gonna sew down the side as far as my I know my presser foot will let me. 
Now my foot is widening at an angle, so I'm just going to put my bulky seam aid underneath it. Now if you've not heard what a bulky seam aid is before, um, there is a lot of tutorials out there. They, I think they're called hump jumpers in the States or jean jigs. Don't quote me on the jean jig one though. Um, but in, the, in this country we call them bulky seam aids. Sometimes they come with your sewing machine, sometimes they don't. For those who don't get one with their sewing machine, I do actually sell them in my shop. Yeah, like my husband's just said, because I, I sell a lot of bulky seam aids. Um, I can only get so much a month from my wholesalers. They put me on a bit of a ban. Right, so. Okay, can we go back to the repair, please? Right, so the next thing you're going to do is get your loose pieces of faux red. <laughs> he is doing a really good job and you are right there. Right, so the next thing you're going to do is grab your lining piece and pop. So you're going to move these D-rings right up up to the top of the flap you're gonna pop your lining right side down onto your right side of your outer flap and you're just going to get some wonder clips i don't advise pinning if you're using pu and you're just going to clip all the way around i think he likes doing the camera work <laughs> it's just just give me an evil grin. <laughs> He's missing Xbox time. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I love you, Michael. <laughs> right, so I've clipped all the way around, apart from this edge. We're gonna leave this edge open and we're gonna stitch three eighths of an inch around the curve edge. When I sew, sometimes have to lift up your presser foot just to make sure you're keeping the three eighths of an inch all the way around so if we go to the front view please right so I'm dropping my stitch length down to a 2.4 there you go and I'm just going to take it nice and slow I'm using my guide on my actual um presser on uh, my press a foot bed where the feet dogs are and I'm going to reverse my stitch hi Becky you obviously have a brilliant husband mine mine often gives me evil grins too or should I say yeah yeah <laughs> no your husband's making you a she should so yeah you've got a great husband too sometimes it's nice to have someone nicer to be fair Teresa Michael's been doing it for about a month now, ish, yeah, ish, and um, he, it has been a change having him there rather than not having to talk to the camera. I know I've got you guys there, but it's just nice to have Michael there as well. Right, so I'm just going slowly around, and as you can see, I just lifted up my presser foot. What's an Xbox? Um, gaming console um, where they play little little boys and little girls games on it. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I play Xbox, so not very often, but yeah. Thanks, Laurie. Yeah, we are. Right, so I'm just going all the way around. As long as I keep him watered and fed, he's fine. <laughs> Just like a house plant. <laughs> right, so I'm just coming to the end. Make sure you reverse your stitches at the start and at the end. Just so you um, are secure in that end and at the start. Right, 
Can we go to the overhead, please, Michael? Thank you. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is you can use pink and shears to go all the way around here if you wanted to. I'll just use an old pair of scissors and I cut one eighth of an inch away. I do own pink and shears, but they're the most hardest things to use when you have um, arthritis in your hand. So I need some, um, need some better ones. Right, so I've cut quite a bit off. I've basically trimmed it back by half. Next thing is, a lot of my club members will know that I'm a cheapskate, so I will use a chopstick. But if you've got like a prim turning tool, use that. But we're just going to poke this all the way out. And I'm going to get the prim tool, um, the prim, I mean the, the lovely expensive chopstick, which was free, into the into the bag and we're just going to bring keep drawing around that edge it will help you when you come to pressing just looking at the shelves behind you you're getting quite a collection of club bags yeah there is quite a lot of club bags there now isn't there there's the new one from the sewing street today and there's um all the club bags are on there at the moment, Laurie. One's hidden now. Right, so because I've used PU, I don't need to press it. But if you haven't used PU, you can press this and roll out your seams. So whoever watched this morning, I gave a good tip. If you're using PU, if you roll that edge of the PU, it basically covers up the actual um, lining so we're just going to run some clips through and just keep rolling the edge now with clips if you're going to do this clip if you're going to clip just make sure you're going to clip and you're not going to leave it overnight. If you leave it overnight with PU, you generally do get some marks left in your PU. So my advice is to basically, um, there you go, to uh, do the top stitching now before you finish for the night or just don't clip it until the morning. Right, so I've clipped all the way around. What you're going to do is top stitch one eighth of an inch or if you're not confident of doing one eighth of an inch do it a quarter of an inch all the way around please me go to the front view please so i'm going to bring my stitch length to a stitch length four and i'm going to remove the clips as i go So far, has anybody got any questions? Because it's very quiet. So who managed to get the um, the sewing quarter kits today? And which kit did you get? All right, so I'm just doing all the way around one eighth of an inch away I'm rolling and holding my seams as I go around I think everyone's transfixed with your tutorial <laughs> thanks <laughs> I sometimes think, am I doing it right? Because <laughs> I've gone really quiet. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting to the end. You don't need to reverse your stitches at the start and at the end of this. We're going to lock the um, 
the stitches um, into the actual um, into the actual seam anyway. Yeah, I am using my walking foot. Um, um, Emma, all right. So for those who are new to the group, Emma Princess, who her name is actually Helen, and um, Lynn to it and um susan are my admin plus my husband so yeah emma i am admin emma i am using my walking foot right so can we go to the overhead camera please babe? thank you right so as you can see i've stitched one eighth of an inch around the edge um, let me just hold that up so that's one eighth of an inch but like I say you don't have to stitch one eighth of an inch away you can do a quarter of an inch it's whatever you're pit happy and comfortable doing so I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to move over to the the flap um, the the flap closure Becky did I brought the grey one Dawn you like the grey one from the start didn't you when I showed it in the week Right, so this one, we need to find the center and the center should come out on this point here. So I've flipped over the PU and let me just bring this down a bit so I can see. So this is four inches wide. Mm, Becky, you're cutting slightly up. Right, so it's four inches wide and we need to draw a line in the centre from that peak in the centre, in the middle, all the way down to there. Okay, and as you guessed it, what's coming out next? Anybody can guess? Yeah, quilter's tape. So we're going to run quilter's tape top and bottom of that line. And once again, right, so we're not going to have a raw edge. My pet hate, and I know some bag makers do it, and I don't mind other bag makers doing it, but my pet hate is I don't like a raw edge here. So, for instance, on the end here, I don't like a raw edge. Some people use um, what we use in leather work. So we, they edge coat it with edge paint from leather. I personally don't like a raw edge, even in leather work. I would roll the edge myself. So I'm going to show you how to do a nice finished edge here on this one. And this technique will go through for all my shoulder straps and for my um, crossbody bags as well. You'll need chairs. Um, Susan, I think I do, to be fair. Right, so I'm just going to peel the backing tape off the one. And this peak here will match up to where that peak is in the centre. So if it overhangs, don't worry, we're going to trim it back. Right, so we're going to stick that. So my cutting is slightly off, as you can see. So we're just going to trim that back. There you go. Right. It's no hardship. As long as you've got that peak right in the center, that's fine. A bit. Sewing Street apparently sold out of the quilters tape near enough as soon as I went on air um, in the first hour. Um, yeah. So let me just peel that back and pop that bit more in the centre. I'm going to do the same with this one. Like I say, the peak, my cutting slightly off. I'm just going to trim that back in a minute. Try and make sure it's all in the centre. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to trim that bit off there. Okay, 
Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is where the two pieces meet in the center, so we've got the join here, I'm going to call this part where it doesn't meet, where it's nice and there's no raw edges in the center. I'm going to call that my right side now and where the two pieces join at the back is my wrong side. I'm going to fold this so it's the two edges, the two folded edges meet and we are going to pop a clip where that pointy bit is where I had to trim that extra bit off. Okay, it looks a bit bizarre at the moment but trust me. So your bit where the two raw edges meet should be on the top and it should have like a fold. So the thing we're going to do now is go to our sewing machine and we're going to oh, we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from this edge across, making sure we reverse our stitches at the start and at the end. Can we get to the front view please, Michael? Thank you. Right, so I've got that um, on my a quarter of an inch away. I'm using, making sure my stitch length has gone back to a 2.4. And I'm just gonna stitch across, reverse my stitch at the start and at the end. Let me get back to the overhead, sorry. Okay, so here we have this edge here that we need to trim back. So with PU, never use your dressmaking scissors. Um, use, um, I, I have several pairs of scissors. I have my dressmaking scissors, which is for my fabric and my interfacing. Um, but I also have another pair of dressmaking scissors which is for like for my cutting my foam stabiliser and for when I'm cutting out PU because PU can blunt your scissors um, especially your dressmaking shears so don't use dressmaking shears when you're cutting PU out so I always revert back when I'm cutting or trimming back any any like seams like I did on the flap I always revert back to the ones that I use for um, the blunter work. So I'm trimming off that point there. So, and then I'm going to trim this back even further. So I'm going just under one eighth of an inch away from that sewing line. I'm going to get my chopstick. I'm going to get the form and we're going to poke this out. Now it is going to be stiff, so we're going to just poke it out as much as we can. There you go, it's coming. There you go. Okay. Now it hasn't poked out that well because this PU is quite a strong PU. You could, for instance, I'm not going to turn it right way, um, the other way. You could sew a bit more and cut a little bit less, or, or cut more off if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that now. So this bit here, where we have um, the two folded edges, we're going to pop those together and clip all the way down, matching up the seams they're matching up the two folded sides okay right so the next thing I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine and I'm going to start from where the clips are. If you start from this side and sew all the way around, 
you will find that um, when it comes to this side the PU will gather up and you will have creases in this so it's always best when you're joining the two pieces together like the two folded sides to always start on the clips clipped side so we're going to sew one eighth of an inch away as far as down as our presser foot will let us because there's quite a large clump here of um, fabric inside so I think my presser foot will let me go down to about a quarter of an inch away that's fine and then we're going to sew up the folded side one eighth of an inch away so it's one eighth of an inch away on this side with the clip side and one eighth of an inch away on this side here but just see how far your presser foot wants to go down here um, like I say there's quite a bit of clump there in this corner here so I reckon I'm going to go at least a quarter of an inch away so if we go to the overhead camera please Michael I'm using a stitch length number four on my machine front view please thank you <laughs> I'm using a stitch length number four he was like which one which one which one is <laughs> in which camera which camera <laughs> he's joking right so I'm using a stitch length number four on my machine and I'm starting off on the clip side right and I'm doing approximately one eighth of an inch away and I'm not reversing my stitch at the start either And as you can see, I'm going quite slow on the machine as it is. Yeah, so I'm stopping around about a quarter of an inch away from where that edge is. And I'm going to sew across. And I'm going nice and slow because I know there was a bit of a clump there. Okay. So as there's a clump, bless the ninja. So for those who are new to the, the group, um, John Scott calls my husband the ginger ninja. So all my club members call him the ninja now, or the ginger ninja. Right, so where the clump is, I'm gonna get my bulky seam made on because I know my foot's going to ride at an angle. So I'm just gonna pop that behind the foot and just stitch the first few stitches until I know my presser foot is riding flat and then I'm just going to carry on stitching up the edge I'm sorry Michael can you pass me my drink please my throat's going thank you sorry Thanks. We haven't got the viral infection, but we have got um, a cough each, um, but it isn't the virus. So um, uh, it's just getting over a, a, a common cold, basically. But I hate having a sore throat. So I've stitched down the two sides, and if we go to the overhead camera, please, Michael. Sorry. Um, as you can see I had to stop a quarter of an inch away because obviously my foot wasn't letting me go any further over that bulk well that's fine it's closed that part up there I'm hoping you can see that on the camera so the next thing we're going to do is grab one of the body pieces that's um, that is a many big glass of wine um, and I don't drink wine. <laughs> I'm allergic to alcohol. <laughs> no, I really am allergic. I'm laughing, but I am really allergic to anything with alcohol. And, um, but yeah, if it was a big wine glass, I would um, yeah, I'd be a bit tipsy by now. Right, so we're going to use one of the main front or the back. It doesn't matter because um, we're just going to name it a bad, uh, body panel at the moment. Body panel's got fleece and interfacing on. We're going to find the centre top and the centre bottom. So, I'm just going to snip into the seam allowance. 
okay so we're going to get the the strap and we're just going to pop a bit of quilters tape on the bottom just to help us with this next step I'm just making sure when I fold this over. Right, so I don't know if many of you know, your machine will sew better from the top than the bottom. Um, so you will notice it more on PU. So this is my top side. So we're going to call this my right side, where the top stitching is, not the bobbin side of my machine. And basically when I put this onto the bag, the nice stitching is going to be on the top so it's key things like that you need to look out for if you're going to ever sell your bag make sure you look for um little key things like that so i'm just popping um a bit of quilters tape at the bottom oh no and don't don't ever apologize it's all right um no but for anybody new in the group i am allergic to alcohol anything with alcohol um perfect example wedding day michael couldn't drink because if he wanted to give me a kiss at the altar you had one in the afternoon. yeah you did in the afternoon but if he wanted to kiss me at the altar he couldn't um have a drink um because if michael's to have a drink and he goes to kiss me on the lips my lips swell up like a trout um like a fish so yeah so I'm that bad to the point where I can end up in hospital sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, like Michael said, it's not just alcohol drinking, it's anything that's got alcohol in it, so like perfumes and stuff. Right, so my centre bottom here, I'm going to get my strap and pop this in the centre. And then what I'm going to do is to hold it into the center. I'm just going to pop a clip just to hold it into place. We're going to measure. Now I can't remember if it's two inches. Oh. Yeah, two inches. It was right. Right, so we're going to measure two inches up from the bottom. And now technically you're not meant to draw on PU, I always like to just put a little, little mark so I just know where I'm sewing up to. So what I'm going to do is sew on that line that I've just sewn all the way up to that first mark, sew it across and then back down. This is just to anchor it into place, so we're doing this for when you have your um, when you undo it, this this flap isn't like flapping around out here, so it's just basically always pointing up. So it's like naturally pointing up and ready to be locked into place for when we put the put it through our D rings. So once again, I'm just stitching up, across, and down. I'm just going to do that quickly without going into the um, front view camera. I'm not reversing my stitch either because like I say we're starting off on the raw edge it's going to be locked into the um, seam right so I'm just coming to the last part there you go right so as you can see I've sewn up the top, across and down the bottom, down the one side. I'm going to take that clip out now. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is get the small D-ring tab. Pop those to one side at the moment and get the small D-ring. And we're just going to draw a line in the centre. So this is one and a half inches, so we're going to measure in up um, three, three quarters of an inch. Right. Oh no, that's more, that's an inch. So that's three quarters. I'm always doing that. Okay. 
so that's three quarters of an inch and drum roll please quilters tape <laughs> and we're going to pop the quilters tape top and bottom and from this bit here <clears throat> and then we're just going to fold those two raw edges into the centre. It's quite a fiddly piece this but it is actually, it's quite small. Okay. Okay, so you can go one more step than what's in the actual pattern. You can actually top stitch one eighth of an inch down both edges. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pop my D-ring on, fold that over, and just pop a clip in it for now. Then we're going to get the the main body front that we've just put the um, the the wrap part on. We're going to measure down from the top. Now, if you're left-handed, you'll need to go from this side. I'm right-handed, um, and I hold it hold the strap in my right hand so I'm going to do it on this side here they are useful trees they are so useful um, best thing is next to quilters tape is clips so I'm measuring two inches down and I'm just going to pop the d-ring into place so my D-ring is basically pointing into the bag, so that's the raw edge of the actual main body piece and the D-ring tab. And what I'm just going to do is go to my machine and stitch across here from here to here and we're going to just use a, a basin stitch but I'm going to reverse my stitch here and here just to hold it into place. I'm just going to do that off the camera just quickly because it's only a small sewing line. As the um, seam is um, 3 eighths, I'm doing it a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Oh, he's picked up that I don't need to ask him. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> and overhead please. <laughs> right, so. Um, I've stitched that into place. Next thing I'm going to do is just pop this to one side. We're going to work on the back panel and the flap now. Oh, right. So we found the centre. Did we find the centre? No. So the back panel is the panel that we've not found the centre top and bottom. So we need to find the centre top at least. I'm not going to find the centre bottom. I'm just going to find the centre top. I've just put a little little mark on it and I'm just going to, like I normally do, pop it on a... Wow, that was a noisy bike. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to pop it on this line here. Okay, I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to find the centre. Now we kind of already done this on the outer piece but not the lining piece so I'm just gonna pop a little clip into the seam lines. So the next thing we're going to do is pop the right side of the flap which is your outer part to the right side of your um, main body back piece we're going to match up that centre like so. Right, so you should have equal distance either side here. We're just going to base stitch within the seam allowance across this edge here. So I'm going to do it one quarter of an inch away from the top. 
Really good front view. So I've put my stitch length to stitch length number five, which is my basting stitch. I'm just going to sew across that. I am reversing my stitch at the start and at the end. And I'm reversing my stitch at the end as well. Right, so I'm just going to pull it apart just to make sure I've caught the edges, which is generally <laughs> I'm not fishing, Michael, or catching a ball. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> right, so I'm just making sure I've caught the edges. All right, can we go back to the front view, please? So the next thing we're going to do is bring this wrap pop <laughs> pop a clip on it because it will get in the way okay so I'm just popping the clip on it we want this area free and we want it free from this area at the bottom I'm going to get the right side so I'm classing this now as the right side the flap um, even though that's my lining part of my flap we're just classing this as the right side I'm going to pop that right side to right side of the other piece and we're just going to match up the edges so I'm making sure all my um, tops match up first and then clip down the sides and then clipping down the base I'm just going to grab the pattern Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is leave this bit open. I'm not going to put any clips on this bit. I'm going to sew one eighth of an inch down this side here, and I'm going to sew one eighth of an inch down this side and across. But I'm going to do it in one long sew, one big, big length of stitches. First thing though is make sure that D ring hasn't folded over. So you basically want that D ring, if I can bring it up here. You want definitely this D-ring to be pointing this way. You don't want this D-ring doing that. And we're sewing across that. It means your needle's going to snap. And to save your needles, make sure your D-ring's pointing that way. So, let me just go to there. Can we go to the overhead? Um, the front view, please. Right, so I'm... Gone back to a stitch length 2.4. Some machines will want to do a, a stitch length number three, but my machine, because I've cleaned it out recently, she's working like a dream, so she will want to do a stitch length 2.4. But if I hadn't cleaned her out, she'd be wanting to do a stitch length number three. So it's all hit and miss. You need to work out your own machines on this occasion. So we're going to use a, um, a seam of one centimeter or three eighths. I know some Europeans are in the group, so I'm just saying one centimeter. And I'm just going to reverse my stitch. It's adamant you need to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. Pardon? Yeah, I know that. I know, but. Michael's just corrected me, being that my husband does that all the time. <laughs> he goes, we're still Europeans. I know we are still Europeans, Michael. Oh my God, don't get me started on that debate. <laughs> but no, I know what I mean. <laughs> we're old fashioned. We like Imperial. Is it Imperial? Metric? I don't know. We like inches. 
I love you, Michael. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so where the D ring tab is, I'm just going to reverse over that area. Now, my machine was jumping a few stitches, so I'm just going to pop this on the back of the presser foot so it rides flat. And thanks, Joe. Yeah, you rock. Um, so it just doesn't jump those stitches. There you go. And I'm just going to carry on stitching. Right, so I'm stopping up um, three eighths of an inch away from the bottom edge. And pivoting. So I lifted up my presser foot and pivoted across. Yeah, you tell him, Lynn. You tell him. <laughs> Lynn's my admin. She'll stick up for me. <laughs> right, so I'm coming to where the um, strap is um, at the bottom. And I know my, mach uh, my foot's going up at an angle, so I'm just going to pop my quilters, um, I mean my seam, bulky seam aid underneath. So I know it rides flat. What Lynn said, I know, that's what I was trying to get you to say. I know. Um, and my foot is coming off at an angle, so I'm just going to pop this through the front part. And just stitch, a few stitches until I know I'm clear. Lift up my presser foot and take that off. There you go. And I'm just going to get to the corner. And make sure my needle's down and then lift up my presser foot and twizzle this around. been told <laughs> all right I'm coming to the end I'm going to reverse my stitch and there you go can we go to the overhead please Michael thank you right so I've stitched all the way around all good humor yes Lynn all good humor um, I'm going to trim this back, the seam allowance, to at least one eighth of an inch. Now I'm just trying to work out where that corner is. I'm going to just go at a slight angle on the corner, but I'm still just over one eighth of an inch away. And same with this corner. You're just basically cutting away some of the bulk. So the bag is really coming together now, so we're going to turn it right side facing out. So I always put my hands in and then just poke that corner. And same with this one. It just gives you a head start. <laughs> she says. And just pull her out. Then take the clip off because I don't want any marks. I've got a few marks there, indents. I'm just going to rub. And because we're adding, adding a bit of heat into that area and a bit of friction, it basically takes away those um, little marks that are indents. Right. And I'm just going to get my friction pen and just poke out that corner if it wants to go. Yep.
roll the edges so it's neat. Okay. And okay. As you can see it's starting to come together now. Um, but we need a lining. So we're going to move on to the lining. So I'm going to pop this to one side. And we're going to grab our lining pieces. Right, so for my lining, I've got my two lining pieces, which are my main body pieces, and they haven't got any um, interfacing on. And then I've got the, um, the actual slip pocket, which has got interfacing on. So I'm going to work with the slip pocket first. Now I'm just going to get one of these labels ready because I like to put a label in. I'll just show you. They're actually woven labels. They're really cute. I just like quirky things, so that's going in my in my bag. <laughs> Michael. Have you read the last comment? <laughs> I love my club members. All, all people, they just stick up for me. <laughs> right, so. Yeah, uh, what I know it's what you said. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. We're going to bring. You've got the long side here. We're going to bring the two short sides together. And we are going to just lightly finger press that fold and I'm just going to pop a clip on the two short sides right so where the two short sides um, met where we fold um, where the two raw sides are which are now the one of the long sides not the folded side the this bit here we need to leave a turning gap so I'm going to leave around about a three inch turning gap in the centre so approximately, it doesn't have to be spot on, but I'm just going to draw two marks. So I've drawn two marks there, I'm hoping you can see that. Yeah, I've drawn two marks there. So the first thing we're going to do is reverse our stitch using a 3.8, uh, 3 eighths of an inch um, seam. We're going to sew down here pivot on the corner and reverse our stitch and finish on this first mark here and then we're just going to repeat the same process start from this bit here or this bit really doesn't matter and we're going to reverse our stitch and pivot on the corner and up to this bit I'm going to use the stitch length 2.4 can we go to the, um, the front view please Right, so I'm going to use a stitch length 2.4 and I'm just sewing down to the first corner, making sure I'm three eighths of an inch away. I'm just sewing to that first mark that I drew. I'm reversing my stitch, making sure I cut my fur red. Is that right? Fur red. Fur red. <laughs> <For> red. <laughs> and moving it over to the second mark. <laughs> I'm never going to get it right, am I? <laughs> and I'm just going to start off on that second mark and reverse my stitch. Stopping at the three eighths of an inch um, at the end, and just basically lifting them up my presser foot and pivoting. Okay. Can we get to the overhead, please? Also, can you just do me a favour? Pass me this down, please. Thank you. Sorry, I can't lean at the moment because of my back to hurting today. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is trim back this seam allowance. 
stay just the way you are. You are charming. Is that to me? <laughs> or is that to the ginger ninja? Because <laughs> I ain't no charming woman. <laughs> right, so we're going to trim back. Don't even look at me, Michael. <laughs> Um, right, so I'm just trimming one eighth of an inch away from this sewn edge. So I've come to where that corner is, where I pivoted. I'm just going to go at a slight angle. And then I'm going to cut to where that first mark line is. So what I tend to do is, is basically, to me, oh thank you, thank you. Um, I'm just going to trim it at an angle, so I've basically got like a an angle here I'm hoping you can see that at an angle here yep you can see that <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut at an angle at the start of that sewn line and trim and trim back the corners and just trim back that thing right so I've got my iron here I've just turned it on to warm up because I'm using um, normal woven fabric for the lining my trusty freebie my chopstick right so that turning gap we're going to push out the slip pocket poking out those corners and this one here Gonna get my chopstick in and get right into those corners to make sure they're all poked out and nice and neat. Right, so we've got this turning gap here. We need to poke that up inside and give that a nice good press. Make sure it's even to give it a nice, nice finish. So. I have got a board underneath this wall mat so it's not damaging my coat mat. Okay, so I've just given that a nice press. The next thing I'm going to do is just pin this to the right, um, to the wrong side. So pin, I'm just going to clip it. Okay, because that will just remind me that I need to put it in. You don't have to put it in, but I just like it. The next thing I'm going to do, on the folded edge, I'm just going to top stitch across one eighth of an inch away. I'm just going to quickly do that now. I'm going to use the stitch length number three on my machine. And I'm just going to reverse my stitch at the start and at the end. And I'm just going to reverse my stitch at the end. Right, so I've done that. Let's turn that iron off. And push that as far as I can get it out of the shop. So the next thing I'm going to do is... Get one of my body lining pieces. We are coming close to the end of the bag, which is really good. As you can see, they're quite quick makes, and the more you make, the faster they will come. Um, I know we're not going out and about much in the UK or around the world. Um, Socialising is forbidden in some counties or some countries. But they make lovely presents for people, quick presents. So, and like I say, a mum to be make that with, with a different closure so she can put her nappies in and baby wipes. Ideal present, so she can put that into a bag. Right, so I'm going to get one of these. Just going to fold this right sides together and just give this a really good finger press. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is get that slip pocket, fold it in half, and give that a good finger press. 
So the rule of thumb is this needs to go in the centre, or approximately. What you need it to be is matching up that crease mark on the pocket to the crease mark on the actual main, and just make sure there's equal gap. But you want it not too close to the top. So I'm just going to bring that down. And I'm just going to make sure that's equal. Okay. So uh, if you want to know my measurement, I've gone one and three quarters inches from the top. If you want to use a measurement. I know some people like to be measure, um, use measurements. What I'm just going to do is pop some pins in. on the sides to hold these together <clears throat> and on the bottom oh lorry <laughs> No, Laurie, honestly, I really don't mind. I've said this plenty of times. What I do is I really do enjoy it. And I've felt really bad not being in this group um, for the last three, just over three months. Um, because I didn't have the right equipment. You guys knew that um, uh, when it came to the club. And I had to wait until all the equipment was here. So, yeah. Laurie, I... To anybody, I, I love doing this, so this is what I, yeah. Anyway, don't get me tearful. I've had a good morning. <laughs> right, so I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch. I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge, all the way down the two short sides and the base. I'm just not going to chop stitch this top part here. So can we go to the front view please Michael? What? <laughs> You're cheeky. You're so male. It's unbelievable. <laughs> right so I'm going to use a top stitch um, number three and I'm going to make sure my needle is one eighth of an inch. Right so I'm making sure that label's in. So if you ever want to add a label, this is the place to add it. So I know it's a rule of thumb in my club. Um, we actually, with the VIPs, they get a label each time, um, which I've designed and or a company's made for me to hand out. And I generally tell them to label their work just to make sure it's like unique to them. Um, so I'm just pivoting now if you want to carry um, if you know the person needs to carry like a few credit cards and they don't want to carry a purse out with them you might want to divide this pocket slip pocket up into half I'm not going to do that um, but it means that they can carry their credit cards in at um, an upright angle Oh, thank you. Thanks. I do like teaching. I really do like teaching. So, and I like making sure everyone's happy with what I'm showing them. And yeah. Right. Can we go to the? Sorry again, Michael. Please. <clears throat> right. So I've top stitched down this side and this side and across. I'm left the um, the top bit. But like I was saying, you could actually stitch down this part here and put two credit cards in just if they want to be flush and take two credit cards out. They can take two credit cards out. But um, it's just ham ideal to put like a makeup a mirror in there and a credit card here if they wanted to. So it's totally up to them. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is get the other lining body piece and we're going to pop this. So I'm just going to get rid of that bit. <clears throat> no, I really don't mind doing it, honest. 
So um, I'm going to get this bit and pop this. So this fabric's upside down, so please ignore. Um, could you put a um, lorry? I would say no because the slip pop. Okay, I say no now. So lorry, I'll give you another measurement if you want to do that. So sorry, guys. Um, let me just answer this question. So on the cutting out slip pocket, uh, do eight inches by seven inches. The eight inches is the longest side. If you actually up the, upped that to 10 inches by seven inches, you can actually put um, cam snaps in. Um, Laurie, so you remember me teaching cam snaps in the club group? Um, I would say you need to add in, um, add that eight inches up to 10 inches. Just to be on the safe side, means that the card's clear and it means that you can get the um, the snap in and the snap will fall just above the, where your card will sit. So your card pocket will come to about here, once folded, your card will be hidden within that little pocket and then put a snap in round about here. But you can't do it for this size of the actual, um, for the actual pocket that measurements that I've given in the pattern that, as it is. Right, so we're popping these right sides together and this time I'm only going to sew down the two sides here. You're welcome Laurie. Um, yeah, Sally, I know what you're talking about. My mum's got one in her wallet. You mean um, to stop them, someone cloning the card while it's in their back pocket and stuff, you put it in like that special. Yeah, um, I will put a link in the group for those people that want to know what me and Sally are talking about. It's to stop um, frauds um, cloning your cards. Um, I'm not 100% but I know what you're talking about and I will get the link and put it in the group um, to what me and Sally are talking about. Or if anybody knows what they are please um, please drop the link into this feed. Right so I'm going to top and um, stitch using a 2.4 stitch length, 3 eighths of an inch down these two long sides. Can we go to the front view please? I'm making sure I reverse my stitch at the start and at the end as well. And I'm reversing reversing and I've reversed at the end not 100% Becky um, I don't know if that's the case but if it is then that's saving you a lot of money um, for doing that um, tin foil I'll have to look into that one myself without saying yes do that um, right so I'm just moved over to the other side I'm saying fab Sally. <laughs> what was that, sorry? Fabulous. Fabulous. And I'm just going to reverse my stitch at the end. Yeah, I will check it out because if, uh, if, if that's true, Becky, I'm going to say use tin foil. Right, so if we just go to the overhead camera, please. 
Right, so I've sewn down the two sides here. What I'm going to do is just open this up a bit and just give this a light finger press. I'm just opening up the seam and giving it a light finger press. And do this one as well. Okay, gonna get the bag and pop a clip on that part there. And I'm just going to move the flap so it's yeah. I'm going to move the flap so it's flat on the back. And we're just going to pu push that D ring out the way, Michael. Please, sorry. Okay. So making sure you're feeding this through the top of your lining. So the way I know that is where the top of the slip pocket is. I'm going to pop this through the top. <clears throat> Sorry Michael, please may you pass me my drink. Thank you. <clears throat> right, so my, my flap keeps wanting to come out, so I'm just going to pop it in and move my D-ring out the way. We're just going to skimmy, shimmy this down. There you go. So what we're going to do is match up this side seam here. So we're going this side seam here to this side seam. And we're going to open up that seam and just clip. Now, if you've got a, f um, a sleeve arm or a fr um, do they call them sleeve arms? Cylinder on your machine where you have to take the base apart, it's advisable that you do that now. I've got a flatbed, so I'm going to show you the flatbed way, but I will describe how a normal machine would work so i'm just basically clipping all the way matching up the raw edges thank you thanks so that's answered becky's question there and so just googled and it came up with just a few sh thick sheets of aluminium yeah so th just add a few thick sheets of aluminium if it saves you money it saves you money <laughs> i'm all for saving money Okay, so I'm just going to pop a few more clips in. And I'll tell you something, it's coming to the season where thick aluminium tin foil is used anyway because it's um, festive season so when you tend to get the turkey ones, are, the big turkey ones are thicker aluminium. Right, so I've just clicked all the way around. If we go to the front view, please, Michael. Sorry. Don't roll your eyes. <laughs> right, so if you've got a sleeve arm, take, take this um, part apart and obviously work rolling this round. I can't take mine apart because mine's a flatbed. So if you've got a flatbed, I work from the inside and move it around, move it around like you would do it as a sleeve arm. So it's up to you how you do it, but if you've got a sleeve arm, this is going to be your best thing to do. So I'm one centimetre away, three eighths of an inch, dropping my presser foot, using a stitch length 2.4 on my machine, and I'm making sure I reverse my stitch at the start and at the end. So I'm going to do this slowly, I'm taking it inch by inch and you have to smooch your bag a bit, when I say smooch I mean moving it around, so. Right, so I've just done a couple of inches, I'm just rolling mine now, you wouldn't have to roll it if you've got a sleeve on.
as you can see it's really easy it's sewing through nice and easily because I've cut away that bulk in that seam area you won't have any problem sewing through this with whatever machine that you're using because you have cut away that bulk which is the biggest help you can actually give your machine is cutting away that bulk in that seam area and a walking foot 100% if you're going to bag make quite a lot grab your walking foot most machines come with them now if not there is universal walking foots out there like I showed earlier on and um, yeah walking foots in bag making is the biggest thing for me anyway okay I'm just coming to the end last few inches and reverse my stitch at the end um, there you go. <laughs> Jan, you don't often make me laugh. Can we go to the um, overhead, please, Michael? <laughs> Can we go to the next slide of the coronavirus update, please? <laughs> that's what that's what Helen says to me. It sounds like when I'm asking Michael to ask for the next bit. <laughs> she said so I'm like doing the update with the Prime Minister on the on a daily basis. Right, so Right, so I'm trimming back this um this edge where we've just sewn, trimming it back by half. So I'm using my what I class my blunter pair of my scissors. Not my shears, not my dressmaking scissors scissors. Make sure you're not cutting into that sewing line. That's a big must. There you go. So we left quite a large turning gap. I left a, a large turning gap for the simple reason is for new beginners, for people that have never made bags before, the smaller the turning gap, the more the frustration and the more you likely not want to make a bag again. So if you can leave the turning gap a little bit bigger than what the pattern says, you'll love bag making. So I've left my turning gap the whole bag. So um, I'm just going to pull it out. So, okay. And then I'm just going to pop this line in inside. So I've turned on my iron. So the next thing I'm going to say is turn your bag the wrong side facing out. So that's the line inside facing out. So we're going to turn it once again. Out. It's so we can press the top area. Now if you've got a if you're a dressmaker and you've got a tailor's arm, I would use that and pop that inside. I don't. Well I do, but it's in my studio at my mum and dad's. So what I'm going to do is pop my mat inside just to help me. I'm just going to pop some steam on here and I'm going to finger press the rest. So because I've used PU I don't want the iron to touch the PU. I'm not bothered if I get creases in the lining down here at the moment. I can press that out at a later stage. Just 
Remind me this way, Michael. I need to pick up my tailor's hat for my mum and dad's place. And then I'm just going to pull this and just give that a press. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is pull this lining down. And what I'm, what I'm doing is like virtually what I was doing here. I'm rolling this so I can see the PU coming through to the inside. I'm just going to clip this and just pull it a bit more. My pet hate is when you've come in to do the last part of the bag where you sew all the way around and you can see the lining on the outside. That's my pet hate so I always pull my lining as much as I can to see the outer edge. Okay, so if you have a sleeve on, before you would have put the clips in, I would have told you to turn it the right side facing out. But because I've got a flat bed, I have to sew from the inside. So I always have to turn my bags inside out. So I'm going to move the flap out of the way. Right. Okay, so I'm going to sew, me personally, I'm sewing from this side, but if you've got a sleeve arm, you would have this, the right side facing out and sewing from this side, but this will obviously be on the outside. So the next thing I'm just going to do is top stitch all the way around here on my machine. So can we go to the front view camera please, Michael? And I'm using a stitch length number four. And I'm going to try and start off as close as I can to one of the side seams. I am not going to reverse my stitch. So what I'm going to do is pull my thread, my thread out as much, about 10 inches. I'm going to find the bobbin thread. So bring that up. And I want that out the same distance okay so I want that much don't trim it off whatsoever just leave it as it is okay I'm not reversing my stitch because we're going to tie the knots off at the end I'm going to start on the flap side and I'm doing it one eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch away as much as what confidence you want to give and I'm just going nice and slow all the way around Moving this flap out of the way where possible. I'm going to lift up my presser foot because I need to unhandle the bag a bit. A bit kinky. <laughs> right, and I'm just going to carry on here. Keep pulling your line in so it doesn't crease up or bunch up. And just going to go, keep going all the way around. What are you watching? Mr. Bean. So Michael, when he's actually operating the cameras for me, he's not just operating cameras, he's got a tablet on the side and he's got his ear earphones in and he's watching Mr Bean. Because Michael isn't anything like sewing, but he does input into the business, so 
he does give me ideas and he's hinted for some mail bags and they are coming <laughs> So, yeah, I'm just nearly finished. Right, so I'm at the end. I'm just making sure I go over at least two or three stitches, but I'm not going to reverse my stitches. Okay, so I'm going to bring up my needle. I'm not cutting my thread. And I'm just going to pull it out, and I'm going to cut about 10 inches. Ooh. Okay, so can we go to the overhead, please, Michael? Right, so you might not see this on the actual um, overhead camera, but I'm going to try. Right, so you should have on your wrong side all these pieces of thread. Okay, so we're going to pull the one, and it will should bring it should bring a little loop out. And basically, I'm getting my tailors all and pulling that piece of thread that's just come through so those two pieces I'm just going to pop there I'm going to do the same with this one as well so I'm going to pull that through there you go and there is one more to bring through there it is okay You'll know when you pull it. Oh, I pulled the wrong one. Hang on. Right, it's not that one. Okay. You'll know when you actually pull it, you should have a loop that comes. There you go. Right, so you should end up with four pieces of strand um, thread on both sides. So you're going to tie two closest together in a knot. And as close as you can pull it and then trim it. And then you're going to do the same for the other two that are closest together. Tie a knot as close as you can pull it to the lining and do it again that just gives it a bit more professional finish where you haven't reversed over your stitches now you can lock those stitches if you wanted to with a bit of um, there it is, a bit of um, fray stop so I'm just going to pop two little drops on that that will dry looks a bit dark at the moment so it looks a bit dark at the moment it will dry it will naturally dry and it'd be nice and um, nice but when we turn it from this side you cannot see where I've reversed over and I haven't reversed over I've just gone over a few stitches and then obviously tied it off at the back right, so the next thing we're going to do is just turn this Right side facing guy. Poking out those corners. Trusty chopstick. And just get in and poke those corners out because we're going to finish off the, this bag. poke out those corners as much as we can. Wow, I can't believe 42 people stayed with us. Oh, it's quite a long tutorial. Sorry, Michael. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, someone's just brought something from the shop. Thanks ever so much. Okay, so. So I poked out the corners. I'm going to roll this just to give it a nice... Now, if you've got a rubber mallet, you can hammer that and it will basically crush the fibres and make sure it sticks into place. Can you buy a rivet press? Um, a rivet maker. Who asked that question? Sorry, what, who asked that question? Sally. Sorry? Sally. Um, Sally, private message me. Um, 
I will basically point you in the right direction of where to buy one from. I'm going to use mine in a minute anyway, so at the end. So yeah, don't hesitate to private message me and I will basically... I've done it with quite a few of my club members um, and people and I want to make sure you get the right dies because there's several dies that you can buy well there's hundreds of dies you can buy right so I pulled out the lining and at the moment you'll find the lining is a lot longer than the bag so this is a club thing I normally teach them I actually fold the lining in quite far so I don't do the seam lines I actually do it a bit further so I'm folding it in around about three quarters of an inch on both sides and then I'm just going to clip could you let us all know yeah of course um, Paula I'll put it into the main group because to believe it or not I can't with my illness I can't use a hammer very well I can't put enough force on it um, so I've had to get a rivet press and I own two um, but there's only one here in my, in my apartment so I've clipped that together I would say press it but I'm not going to do that and I'm just going to quickly sew across here I'm just going to quickly do that off camera so I'm using the stitch length um, number three on my machine And I'm making sure I reverse my stitch at the start and at the end. Nearly finished, and then I'll be back. I'm just going to trim off that loose for red uh, at the end <laughs> and I'm just going to pop that inside there poke out those corners now I do like to sew my bags get their shape is put some bubble wrap in or some um, paper or something just to stuff it out and so it gets its shape so I'm going to do that now stuffed it out I'm going to roll it up and to feed that through so you like doing a, this reminds me I used to have a belt on my school trousers when I was little um, or a dress, penny fold dress, I had D-rings on it and you feed the strap through the two D-rings and then over the top one and then feed it through the bottom one. So that bag is finished, we're just going to do the, the strap and then pop the rivets in. So it's actually a really nice bag, I actually like the colour of that. <laughs> it's so me. Right, so the strap last bit guys last home stretch right so for this you'll need your swirl hook um, your quilter tape and you'll need a marking tool and a quilter's rule right so the working from the wrong side of the actual um, strap could you hand stitch the lining best you can Teresa I I used to but I find that I haven't got any time now um yeah hand stitch it's far more professional to hand stitch a ladder stitch across the bottom Michael can you just make sure that iron's not going to fall off please just put it there please I'm just worried about okay Thanks. It's an expensive iron. I've been through three this year already. <laughs> right, so we've got the strap. Yeah, we've got the strap. We're going to measure in from these two edges here a quarter of an inch. So. Right, 
and I'm just going to pop a line from top to bottom and the same on this one so the strap is four inches wide so I'm going to measure across horizontal two inches up Okay, we are going to run quilter's tape on the top and bottom of this line here but we're not going to run quilter's tape in these two marks here, in these two marks here. So because we don't want this in the area where we're going to sew. So let's just get the quilter's tape. and on the top the next thing I'm going to do is not peel off the back end but I'm going to fold this just like we're going to fold fold it together right we're going to we're going to get the swirl clasp and we're going to feed this on like so okay now you might find it starts um, peeling off the back end that's fine we're going to come past that bit anyway in a minute so the next thing we need to do is bring this short end to meet this short end but we're going to bring the two right sides together and we're just going to pop a few clips in Where this line is we are going to sew using um, a stitch length 2.4 reversing our stitch at the start and at the end and we're only going to sew on this line here I'm just going to quickly do that off the camera going to open up these now and we're just going to give it a really really good finger press I'm going to run my nails in and give that a good press okay so we're going to move this swirl clasp as far round as possible at the moment so you're just going to have to keep pinching it now it looks a mess at the moment don't stress it looks a mess but don't stress it's not going to be much of a mess much longer so we're going to start off here. I've been in your group for enough month and I've learned so much from you. I admire you and give me a... Oh, Tracy, thank you. No, I can't read the last bit. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you, Tracy. But say things like that bring me to tears a bit um all right so i'm going to peel off this backing tape here just the one side at the start and i'm going to do it inch by inch so first of all i'm going to open up this seam which keeps popping and then i'm going to peel off this say the one that i've peeled off here i'm going to peel off this side as well and then i'm just going to bring this raw edge over to the center Okay, and we're going to clip as we go along on this one edge. Okay, so we're going to... Yeah, it will naturally start wanting to fold into the centre like it's already trying to now. Just make sure when it folds over, not to press it down until we know it's in the centre. 
I'm just going to clip pegs as I go. And you're going to move this swirl clasp around. Like I say, it's a struggle, but it will go. Peel off the backing tape to just that one side we've started clip, um, started sticking on. Make sure there's no creases um, in that bit. And we're just gonna go as far as we can go to that end there. I'm going to peel off that completely. It will go. You can do use an iron for this. It takes a little bit here and there to do that. So I'm not going to do anything with that area at the moment. I'm just going to come back to that area. I'm going to stop at that bit there. I'm going to repeat the same for this side. So I'm going to peel off this back in and open up this seam here and fold that over to meet into the centre. Now the backing tape in there, don't worry, we pull it out. I'm just going to keep sticking that into the centre. And it's going to get easier and easier once you get to this next bit. So I'm just going to pull that, yank it out, and clip there. And as you can see, it's already trying to fold that bit there. So I'm just going to carry and clip him. Right, so I'm leaving that bit at the moment. I'm going to work with this bit section now. I'm going to take the clips off bit by bit and fold. So that bit in the centre, this bit here, it's going to go right inside now and we're going to bring the two folded sides together like so and then we're just going to keep bringing the clips together so it folds so i'm doing this and then we're just going to keep going round Matching up the edges, the two folded edges. Right, so I've come to that bit where the jumble up messes. So, I'm going to take that clip off. That's where the joint is. And I'm just going to move this clasp over to the bit where it's um, basically on the bit where it's getting really neat and just pop that clip back in. Then we're just going to finish off this part here, fold it into the sections, into the centre and just clip those bits. And just carry on clipping. Oh, you're welcome, Anne. You're welcome, hun. Honestly, it's no hardship. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is 
top stitch um, one eighth of an inch on this side first away from the edge so when we go around we're going to have to move the clips and then we're going to keep moving this around so if we go to that was a motor car please may you go to the front view please Michael okay so I've turned mine so my clasp is on the inside because this the bit that I'm going to stitch on is going to be my the bit that I'm going to see on the outside <laughs> that's a bit of a tongue twister right so I'm going to start where the seam starts so where the join is and I'm going to do stitch out for number four because it's quite bulky that area and I'm doing one eighth of an inch away and I'm just going to reverse my stitch a few times not much but I'm going to reverse right so I'm stopped at a point I'm going to take a clip out and pull this trigger clasp towards me and carry on sewing for a couple of inches and then take a few more clips out pull the trigger clasp towards me the swirl hook and carry on stitching a few more stitches take a few more clips out and pull the clasp towards me and then you're going to get the picture now so I'm just not going to keep repeating myself <laughs> a bit of a bird's nest of fur red underneath so I'm just gonna trim this back and I'm gonna pull my clasp over that joint it might be a bit of a fiddle and I'm just gonna reverse my stitch and then I'm just gonna repeat it on the folded side so just all the way around, keep moving that clasp out of the way. I like to start off on the join and finish off on the join. Because the join is going to be hidden underneath on the wristlet. Okay, so could you do me a favour please? Just grab me the rivet press and just put it down here, please. That's brilliant, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Did you see me move? <laughs> <laughs> right so I'm just coming to the end I'm just going to go and reverse my stitch at the end right, so I'm just going to cut off any loose thread please may we go to the overhead thanks Michael I'm just going to trim off any other pieces of thread for red <laughs> right so you'll see where the join is I'm just gonna move that out of the way for a minute you'll see where the join is what I want to do is bring this swirl clasp to, well first of all I'm going to twist so my clasp is on the outside that's it I just want to get rid of some of that no right so 
like the flap I've worked out which is my bob inside which is this part here that's going to be the inner part and I've worked out which is my top thread side for some reason my machine just stitches better from the top and not from the bobbin right so this part here where the join is I'm just going to fold that so it eats around about three quarters of an inch where that is and I'm just going to pop a clip so from the top side I'm going to stitch around about one and a quarter of inches away from this folded edge just across I'm just going to do that off the camera I'm making sure I reverse my stitch at the start and at the end Now you would do this no matter what, whether you're putting a rivet in or whether you're not putting a rivet in. Um, but you will need to do this no matter what because it secures the stitches. I'm just going to get rid of any bird's nest that I've got from the stitches. Okay, to give it that nice finish. Okay, so coming to the last bits. Whee! Um, so first of all we need to put a rivet in here and a rivet in there it's not in the pattern but it's for those who want to put a rivet in so I've got two sizes of rivets I've got a nine millimeter cap on both of them but I'm gonna hold these up to the camera um, right so these tubes this is nine mil this one and this tube is nine mil this is a nine mil cap but this is actually only a six mil um barrel the reason why i've got a smaller one is this bit here hasn't got that much bulk so a six mil will be ample enough this has got quite a large amount of bulk this area here so it needs definitely needs a nine millimeter barrel so I'm just going to pop some holes in into the center okay. so I'm using my prim tool to poke some holes in um, but on my other rivet press I have actually got the whole punch dies but I haven't got room to hold two two dies. Can you use Chicago screws? Yes you can Margaret, you can use Chicago screws. I've taught Chicago screws in on my YouTube channel as well. So for anybody that wants to know what Chicago screws are, you don't need a machine, you just need a screwdriver and something to put um, to make your hole punch. Um, you definitely need a hole just a bit bigger than the um, the hole that I've produced here um, for Chicago screws. But Margaret, you 100% can use Chicago screws. You can even use, um, not on this one, but on this one, the heart Chicago screws that I sell within my shop. You can use the ordinary Chicago screws that I sell in my shop and this bit here as well on this strap. So I'm just going to pop the longer rivet into this hole here, flip this over and it, the barrel pokes out on the opposite side. You've got a cap that's got no barrel on it, but you're going to pop this little part of the cap over that barrel and you'll hear it click. No. Um, no. See, you don't have to, Margaret, use... Um, uh, rivets you don't even have to use Chicago screws for those who are starting out on bag making they you don't have to use it whatsoever I'm not going to set that yet because obviously you won't capture me on the overhead camera I'm just going to pop a hole in that bit there and pop that rivet through and then I'm just going to get Michael to put the front view camera on please for the last time I 
Thank you. Right, so I'm hoping that you guys can see that. Let's move that out of the way. Right, so I'm just making sure you can see it before I carry on. Can you see this in the picture? Yes, you can. Right, so here on your rivet press are what we call rivet dies. Um, you can do cam snaps on these machines. You can do um, puncher holes. Um, you can put set your grommets. Um, when I say grommets, I mean eyelets. This machine does quite a lot and all it is is taking the parts out, top and bottom, and buying the correct part for that specific thing that you're setting. So I've got nine millimeter cap dies. So I've got a nine millimeter die. So the cap will happily sit in this die here because it's nine millimeter. And the same um, with the top one as well. So I'm just going to pop that inside there and just press down and it's set. Uh, you can hear it, you can feel it crunch and it's literally set into place and that won't move whatsoever. That's completely set. I'll do the same with this one as well. So I pop that one in and squash down. And that is it. These are such a lifesaver. I cannot hammer for my life and set a rivet. I always struggle. Yeah, so that is one finished bag. Ooh. Right, so do you want to come and say hi and bye to Michael? He's looking at me going, no, yes. You're part of the brand. <laughs> the kids and you are. Don't go around, just come down. <laughs> here he is he hello hi so yeah um so yeah uh those people that are tuning in now we are going because <laughs> we're hungry <laughs> but um yeah can you set a river without a press you can um okay all right bye, uh, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you can lynn um you can buy like a hand setting tool which is like a little barrel about this big and a hammer and you get this little anvil and you basically whack and yeah you need to be on a strong surface for that but yeah there's no harm in trying one of those first so yeah um yeah so I'm glad you enjoyed that I'm gonna sort my throat out um club members um so for people that are not knowing what club is <clears throat> Club members, um, my club is, there's an on, online subscription club and we, I do Pacific Bags for them. It's a monthly paid subscription and basically um, I do a lot of in-depth tutorials, a bit like one I've done today, but they generally have two or three a month in their group and likes so of this bag here is the one we're making at the moment, which Club members, Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday is the live at 6.30, guys, so, yeah. So, the next bag we will be making will be the folded over clutch. Um, it's got a bit of a patchwork style to it. You don't have to do the patchwork, but it's totally, totally up to you guys. Um, but I'm going to teach how to treat PU as in a patchwork. I'm also going to show you how to cut it at an angle. It's going to be an in-depth one like this one. I can't tell you the specific date of when that's going to happen. Um, I think it's going to happen around about in about two to three weeks time in this group again. And then this one here, which is the triangle flap one will be a tutorial which will hit my YouTube channel because basically it's generally the exactly same process as this one but we're just going to, I'm just going to teach you how to install a thumb lock instead a bit like this one which is from the the blog that I posted earlier on in the week and then after the 26th um, of November I will demonstrate this one 
but I have got some mini tutorials coming up for you guys in this group um, so yeah I'm glad that everybody has tuned in and enjoyed themselves so like I say you can get this pattern it's a free download within the um, the website which is www.rjafmakes uh, or you can buy the paper pattern version so yeah I look forward to seeing you all soon I'm gonna say goodbye and have some lunch uh, have some yeah lunch lunch, tea. lunch dinner same thing yeah right gonna love you and leave you and see you all soon bye